Okay, yeah, I'm gonna get castrated for this one. Uh, the topic today is the different brands of trucks out there. And I know I'm gonna get on for this, and you know what? Oh well. My personal opinion, and that's all this video is about, it's gonna boil down to what you are doing. If you're running an oil field, your best truck out there is probably gonna be a Western Star or a Mac. They are built strong. The Macs are not comfortable at all. If you think they are, I'm sorry, but they're not. If you're gonna build a oil field out in the bush truck, you are looking at a Western Star or a Mac. If you are pulling Super Bs, grain trains, cattle haulers, you are probably gonna be looking at a Western Star or a Peterbilt or Kenworth and the biggest horsepower you can get. Western Stars have come a long way. You can use a Western Star. Like I would love to buy a 4900EX. They are beautiful trucks, the low maxes. They're great highway trucks. I drove one for nine years. Okay, I don't know specifically if you're gonna need the biggest bunk for these three, but everyone I've ever seen has got the biggest bunk available because you're usually hauling more weight and your downtime and stuff like that. Don't know very much about grain hauling, cattle hauling, stuff like that, so I'm not gonna touch much on it. When it comes to freight deck vans or boxes, you can buy whatever the freak you want. My personal opinion is Kenworth, Peterbilt, and then Star, one of the three. Don't matter if you're shifting your own gears or not. It doesn't matter the motor. Those are the three I would pick. They have the best quality. They have the long-term durability and they look pretty freaking sexy. Now, you can swear and chew me out because your Freightliner is the best thing known to man. You can swear up and down and think your Volvo is the best thing known to man. That's great. If you got a good Volvo or you got a good Freightliner or you got a good International, great. I just personally don't like them. Don't get me wrong, the Volvo is a nice truck. Drives really well for vans, turns really well, shifts really well. It's just not my personal favorite. There's nothing wrong with it, I just don't like them as much because I'm not a particularly big fan of their motors. Nothing wrong with them. They run really well, they are expensive to fix, and Volvo used to be known for their electrical problems. Freightliners, I've just never been a fan of Freightliner from day one. Ever since they went after the, moved out of the FLDs, never been a fan of them. They've had electrical issues. And yes, every truck out there's got its own particular issues. So I'm not just picking on Volvo and Freightliner for electrical issues. They all have issues. I don't like their electrical issues. Uh, their seats are overly uncomfortable. Their beds are overly uncomfortable to me. I know 15 guys are good buddies of mine that absolutely just love Freightliners. They won't drive anything else. And all the power to them. You will never see me buy one. Max, or as I call them, puppy dogs, I will not touch one. They are the roughest ride. They are built for oil field, and you cannot convince me otherwise. They are rough, but they are built strong. Like you can take them out and beat the living crap out of them, and they will still go. Like they are built for the bush. That's all they've ever been built for. This newest model they have out now for highway, they rushed it and was not done right. They rushed it and it is built like crap. International, eh, they're just ugly. <laughs> I'd drive one if that's what the owner had and that's what he wanted me to drive them, but if I'm gonna go sign the lease or the finance or buy one, it ain't gonna be one because I think they're ugly as hell. Now the biggest problem that people are gonna have with this video or the biggest problem that people do. You get a lot of new drivers. Now that could mean you're new to the country, that could be new to the industry, new period. You're gonna be pulling deck or you're gonna be pulling boxes and you go out and buy a 650 horse Detroit. Great, overkill, you're gonna burn too much fuel. But you're also gonna spend depending on the age of the motor if it's emissioned or not cat up until they stop production has always been the most expensive motor out there to rebuild as soon as you put yellow paint on that stupid thing you're gonna pay now if you need to pull the buckingham palace across the world do it with a cat they have the pulling power but they are freaking expensive to build and fix Love them to death, but would never own one because 
I ain't Daddy Warbucks. Cummins seems to be the best of both worlds. They get decently good fuel economy. They don't cost Fort Knox the fix. They do re relatively well. Now, I'm not gonna say in, there wasn't a bad Cummins motor, just like I'm never gonna say there was a good Cat or Detroit. You're gonna have problems. Every manufacturer on this planet, be it a Western Star, be it a Caterpillar, whoever, you're gonna have your problem child. This is just my opinion. If I could go out and build my ideal truck, it would be a 4900 series Western Star with the 82 inch stratosphere, Cummins motor, and I'd be done. I'm not saying what transmission or rear ends because I'm not telling you what I'm building the truck for because that will change in a heartbeat depending on what I'm pulling. If I pull vans and reefers, I'd have an automatic and 355 gears. If I was pulling Super Bs, it'd probably be a manual and something else. Like your transmission of gears is whatever you want. If I could, I'd go Cummins all day long. They are proven to be a good all around motor for power, fuel, everything. And rebuilds are decently priced. In wrapping this up, everybody's got their own opinion. Like I got a couple buddies in the US that bleed Peterbelts. They will not drive anything else. They will not work for anybody that doesn't have a Peterbelt. I got other buddies that bleed cats. They think the best engine in the world was a 6NZ Caterpillar, which is fully mechanical. Which would, yes, I will never dispute that. That is a freaking awesome motor. People develop a likeness for brand affiliation, be it a truck, be it a motor, simply for three different reasons. One, that's what their old man drove. Because their old man drove it, that's what they want to drive. Because that's what their old man's truck had for a motor, that's what they want. Secondly, when they finally got trained, either properly or not, that's what they drove. So they know that motor, or they know that truck. Which in saying could also be wherever they worked for the first period of their career, that's the truck or engine that they dealt with. So they're used to it, they're familiar with it. And the last reason, peer pressure. Well, all my friends like a Peterbilt or all my friends like a Caterpillar, which is yes, the stupidest reason, but it does happen. In conclusion, most people put their like button on inconclusive information like where I worked or my pappy had it or friends and not actual hard facts. And one of the biggest faults of human society is if you walk into Billy Bob's trucking as your first job and Billy Bob has a Freightliner with a Caterpillar 13 speed and that truck is either in the shop every week or constantly breaking down, you're never going to touch another Freightliner and you're never going to touch another Kitty Cat Caterpillar motor. But in retrospect, if you start a Billy Bob's trucking industry and you get that same Freightliner with that same motor and for the four years you work there have no problems whatsoever, you're going to be branded that truck for life. Meaning 95% of society, if they have zero issues with their first truck in the industry, they will constantly buy that no matter what. And if they have zero issues with a motor, they will buy only that motor for the rest of their trucking career, if it's available. Without looking at the research and without looking at real world facts on motors, trucks, fuel economy, it's all experience, personal, feelings and all that that dictates what they buy. My own personal decision of what I would buy, yes, has some to do with personal experience because I drove Western Star, the 4900EX, not the Lomax. I had the oil field version for nine years. So I have a lot of experience with it. But in saying that, I have a lot of technical diesel friends in the industry. And so I have a lot of technical information that tells me which motor and all that is technically best or which truck is technically the best so i have both sides of it okay. so i'm not leaving my decision on just that i drove a western star for nine years at the end of the day pick what you like pick what you want doesn't really matter what your buddy says your boss says whatever i just ask you if you're trying to do it at least look at the facts the stats the c but if you really don't care then you really don't care